Blog Talk Radio. Hey guys, this is Those Guys with your host, Matt Marrero, not along with your other host, Tristan Walter. Um, not understanding, not really sure why he's unavailable at the moment uh, because you tell someone, hey, we have to do a podcast at a certain time and and then and then they don't call in and then you're left alone. I mean, does he expect me to turn to the dark side? I don't understand exactly what what is going on here. I mean, I don't know if it's a, if it's an Anakin Padme situation, really. But uh, but I'm kind of sitting around thinking, well, you know, is he? But what's going on here? Okay. Um, but I'll say this much right now. Uh, we're talking, you know, today we're talking about uh, you know, we're talking about Star Wars Episode Three: Revenge of the Sith. And strangely enough, I think this might be my favorite movie out of the newer trilogy, the newer trilogy being, you know, episode one, two, and three. Uh, this might be my favorite, and it's hard. You know, it's really hard to um, to say that, but it's my favorite movie, and I don't know why, right? I don't want it to be. I want to hate, you know, the, the newer trilogy, episodes one, two, and three equally, but I'm unable to uh, because this one comes out, and I'm not saying it was perfect because, no, it wasn't. But it definitely wasn't as horrible, I think, as episodes one and two. Also, we have Tristan Walter on the line right now, but and, and I can and I know that he can hear me. I don't know if I want to put him through. I have I felt betrayed. Um, but anyway, I'll put him through, even though I feel betrayed. Hello, Tristan Walter. I feel betrayed. You underestimate my power. I would have gotten in here whether you let me in or not, Matt. Tristan, you're breaking my heart. You're damn right I am with my fist going right through your jugular right now. What? You're the one that didn't call in in time, asshole. I don't understand why I'm the one getting the fucking third degree here. Uh, hey, speaking hey, of third I degree, a, I, Anakin, there was a problem. Speaking of third degree. Um, no, <sighs> I was worried that you didn't understand that, uh, like, because there were some discrepancies on the time. I was worried that you um, did not realize. So I thought, oh, God, did he not think that the time was moved? No, 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 it was moved. No, I did. Okay. It, no, it's fine. I tried no, no, to no, call in, and it apparently fucked up, and I tried again, and I got in. So, okay, yeah. that's fine. No, 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 that's fine, that's fine. I just I didn't know what it was. Um, anyway, so I was just telling everyone that was listening in, uh, and of course, again, if anyone doesn't know, this is Tristan Walter. Um, we've been doing a lot of Star Wars uh, podcasts for Star Wars Wednesday over the last few weeks. Um, but yeah, so episode three is my favorite out of one, two, and three. And I don't understand why that is. Um, I, I try to come to some conclusions. I think I know why, but I really don't because I'm not supposed to like this. I'm not supposed to. Why not? Because it's titled episode one, two, and or three. Okay. So I'm not supposed to like this, but, um, but I do. However, of course, there were flaws, you know. I mean, hell, there were flaws in the original trilogy, but I do think the flaws in these were a lot worse because, as we said about 1 and 2, you know, 4, 5, and 6 already come out, so you should write down notes and understand, oh, okay, you know, this is going to happen here, it's going to happen there. Oh, this might contradict this. Let's maybe not do that. Okay? Okay. Um, right. But anyway, talking about the movie, though, right, what, you know, what did we because I know you also enjoy it the most out of one, two, and three, even though this yeah. is three, so I don't know why three would be included, but still, you enjoyed this now, yeah. why did you enjoy it? Well, I mean, for me, I guess it's it's the story how do I say this it, it's the, it's it's Not yeah, it's the conclusion it's the, the climax. It's the final tragedy hmm. it's the tragedy that everyone has been wanting from, you know, the beginning. It's like, you know it's coming, and now it's finally here. What, you know, right. what is the final nail in the coffin that, you know, puts our lovable little Tatooine boy over the edge and make him into Galactic Hitler? <laughs> Basically, yeah. No, um, no, that's completely legitimate, yeah. Uh, it's And I think it is something everyone's been wanting to see, to the point where I think people would have been happier with Episode 1 dealing with it, and then 2 and 3 dealing with him as Vader. Pre Luke, probably yeah. <laughs> you know, um, no, yeah. I do think, or at least seeing the whole Clone War thing happen instead of yeah. the, the the build up and then just hey, go watch right. animated shows. 
you know, there's nothing wrong with animated shows, but it's just, hey, go watch animated shows. Yeah. And it's that like, oh, okay, do cool, thanks. I a lot better with character development. But, yeah. I mean, they have more time um, to do it, time. so. Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah of course, they exactly. have more time. But um, one thing I want to mention is, I think this is my favorite opening crawl out of the last three, because even, okay, you, I don't know why, is it weird that the yeah. word war got me hyped? <laughs> right? Is it weird? <laughs> You saw it too, right? Like, it's just war. Yeah. And you're like, oh, I feel aroused. I don't think I should. Um, and <laughs> because you're... it stands out. Yeah, it does. You know, where the last two have just been, Diplo- you know, diplomacy, diplomacy, war. Copyright law. <laughs> Trade right? Federation like, that's law. Just... Basically, yeah, no. Could you just... imagine if their mm-hmm. opening call started with trade law, exclamation? <laughs> no, I think copyright law would be the best, just... The word Jedi was actually used. Is it oh, is it considered public domain? You know, well the, yeah. well, the council have to start using Jedu. Find oh, out pfft. on Star Wars. Star Wars is also copyrighted. Oh jeez. But anyway, uh, yeah, no, it's just it's it, that's basically the fucking movie. It would really be super duper frustrating. Um, but no, honestly, they have had action scenes over the last two, right? They have, to be fair. But um, but no, I I don't know why. Just the way this one started off, I think it uh, it was a lot longer, right? And it, again, it was just the idea of like war. This is a war that's going on. Also, this yeah. fight with General Grievous. Watching it again, I, I already saw it earlier today. But watching it again and de- definitely paying a bit more attention, even though I should have been paying attention the first time. Um, well, not even just Grievous. I'm sorry. The um, his people in his court, you know, in his uh, in his court, people in his quarters. Yeah. Still, it's just, it's an amazing fight. You know, it's an amazing fight sequence. And as it goes on, it just gets better and better, in my opinion. And it's definitely, okay, it's still CGI from, you know, the mid-2000s. But I think for some reason they got it down or, I mean, yeah, there was a lot of stuff that was a bit too cartoony, I would argue. Like, you would see the rebels and see the scenery and you go, it's a bit too much. But for some reason, I felt like it blended in a bit more compared to episode two when we had the car scene. Like the chase, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I, I I feel like the fight, you know, the, the, the general opening went on for a very long time, but in a good way. And yeah. also overall, this movie had a lot more, you know, a lot more fighting, a lot more action. And in my opinion, right? Because some people might say, oh, well, that was just a way to mask, you know, you know, bad writing, right, or a bad script. Well, it worked. Right, <laughs> I think that's the thing, though. It w- because I don't know. Maybe someone could say, "Well, I can see through it." So, all right, well, all of us can see through it, right? But the point is, is that it worked because you know you've had episodes one and two, while having a, a decent amount of action scenes, having so much dialogue. At least episode two, to the point where you're like, "Please, I don't care about. I want the characters to shut up right now." Yeah. But you really Kill want each to say, other. shut up. Basically, <laughs> um, do something. <laughs> no, yeah, well, the thing is, it's not even like it was to do something, more, you know, the fact that, like, in episode two, I told you I did not enjoy what was perceived, was supposed to be portrayed as a love story. In my opinion, it yeah. was just not a love story. It was completely fucking wrong and twisted. And episode yeah. one, it was just baby Hitler. It's just like, look at baby <laughs> Anakin. It's like, I, no, that guy one day is going to kill other children. Matt, he won't actually kill other, oh, my God, he's killing other children. Right? Like, and, and when episode one came out, you probably had a decent amount of people that were like, this is the guy that will one day kill babies. And you had someone go, he's not actually going to kill babies, okay? <laughs> Fucking went around and killed. <laughs> you know? I mean, like, I don't know, I don't know if you heard about it. I heard that there was actually a director's cut, uh, which actually extended the movie to three hours. And in those extra 40 minutes, Anakin was just slaughtering those kids. Just for just 40 minutes. Oh, you mean like, but also added on to other parts of the film? No, just an additional 40 minutes of Anakin killing kids. Just order 66, extend this for 40 minutes. You know, I mean, they really wanted to drive the point across, you know, Jedi are no longer welcome on Coruscant, so, you know. Just just kill younglings. <laughs> and uh, then, um, no, but seriously, all jokes aside, though, um, it was still pretty fucking frightening. Just like, what are we going to do? And it's just like, uh, uh, oh, God. Um, yeah, the first yeah. time I saw that, that was horrifying. Cause, yes. Oh, it, I, I mean, it really doesn't need description. The kid literally walks up to him, you know, looking up to 
supposedly someone is on the council, you know. Yeah, a trusted to, member of society. Yeah. Even someone to look up like, to. And yeah. he and doesn't just, say a word. Mm-hmm. He just ignites the blade and that's it. And the kid... I mean, I thought the scene was very well done. The kid just jumps backward. Like, it's like it's I think the confusion. first kid was the luckiest. <laughs> Why? The other kids went first? Just, yes, I assume because I assume even though they're small, I assume his blade didn't take out ten at once. Like, literally, yeah. the first kid was literally the 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 best kid in this entire fucking scenario. Because every other yeah. kid is just like, um, uh. Magic tricks? This is magic? Is this what magic is? I heard magic is fun. Is this magic? No, 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 John is dead. Okay, this is not magic. All right, so um, we're going to put up our swords. Okay, no, I'm already, I think I'm already dead. Oh, okay. That didn't work. Um, hey, Samantha, could you, nope, Samantha's already dead as well. Okay, so we're all going to die here. No, okay, we're all <laughs> already dead here. Why am I still talking? Oh, I'm a ghost? Oh, wow, I can do the forest ghost thing. That's actually pretty cool. Supposed to be. Oh, God. Literally, Another like, edit. maybe I was the chosen one. Oh shit! Another, another edit Rob's to right. um, Return the of the guy. Jedi. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's the whole order behind them, and they're like, and Anakin comes in, and they're just like, "What's he doing here?" <laughs> and Yoda um, and Obi Wan are like, "Um, uh, <laughs> yeah, <that's, laughs> oh god, it would have been I, so um, bad." It would have been. No, but I um. <laughs> So yeah, I again, you know, I enjoyed this movie. Um, there, you know, I enjoyed the action sequences because again, I really do think that it not only you know was able to just hide some of the because I don't think everything that was said in this movie, like oh, every single line of this movie was bad, so it needed that. No, but again, no. looking at episode two, it definitely needed something like that oomph, you know, that extra yeah. extra fight scenes to get rid of some potentially bad dialogue. And yeah. but still, some of the direction it was it was interesting because I understand the idea of um, like I understand like okay you know Anakin wants to save Padme right yeah. and also his anger getting the best of him so he is unable to be somewhat rational. However, it's strange right. because in a weird way, at least when he ends up um, you know when he ends up saving uh, when he ends up saving Palpatine in the strangest way, right? It was he was still following Jedi code, like even though I know he was doing it to say, "Oh no, I want him because I want to get info out of him." In the weird, yeah. twisted, sick way, he was actually saying, "No, but we must keep him alive, the Jedi way, right?" And I was like, "Oh wait, actually, right, that is the Jedi way." What are well, you doing, Samuel L. Jackson? <sighs> that's what I wonder. I mean, Palpatine was probably twisting him. Well, obviously twisting him from the very beginning. In that, yeah. Uh, the opening yeah, scene, yeah. or even even before this movie starts, but in the opening mm-hmm. scene, you know, when he has Dooku right there, he says, "Good, now kill him." It's like, okay, red flag should be going up right there. This is supposed to be the leader of the Republic in the Senate. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, it's just, it's just, uh, you know, it's do it. You got to do it. You got to do what you got to do, man. Yeah. Or huh, yeah, that he does even, sound like know, something says, a trusted official would say. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> Wait. Oh god! Oh, wait. by the I way, oh, so, I shouldn't have done that. Yeah, no. I did a bad. This, this movie confused me for for one reason actually, um, and I think it's the only thing that was ever confusing because everything else I may not have enjoyed the, the you know the twists and turns, but the one thing that confused me was when when fucking um, I believe it was um, it was Dooku who like fucking forced uh, used the force to break off the side of that fucking. Um, you know the uh, you know the walkway. Uh, the walkway. Yeah. Yeah, and, and then it falls on Obi Wan. I'm just like, hey, so are we gonna kill him here? Cause you're bringing yeah. us to AU territory right now, right? Like just literally well, just. And then it's, no, because here's the thing, right? When it, the way it fell on him, the way they animated it, it looked like yeah. it's just like, all right, he might be able, he might be alive, but but his legs are is, definitely but, broken. <laughs> walk is a funny word. Um, yeah. walk is an interesting word. Yeah. You know, um, I thought maybe so too. roll, roll, yeah. maybe, um, maybe force move. He was the force to be like a wheelchair kind of crutch thing. But, uh, the no, word he'd be walk in way too much really pain a, to focus. The, yeah, like the word walk is a very, uh, you know, is a very, um, liberal. Yeah. Right? A, yeah. I mean, um, at the very least, some bruising. Holy crap. 
Yeah, and I know, mind you, it was just like, oh, yeah, we'll pick him up. You know, he's not necessarily walking exactly. I mean, he's unconscious. But just like, unconscious isn't really the best term to use here. More like yeah. you're dead or, you know, it's kind of like, Oh my, and Obi Wan, let me pull your pull you out of the oh oh your legs are not <laughs> with you. Oh, I mean, I guess they kind of had it. If you didn't they... pull, the legs would have been there. <laughs> Anakin, why? That's the stand up to me now, Obi Wan. Oh, imagine the end of the movie. How dare you stand up to me now, Obi? Oh my God, no, I'm so sorry. That just happened. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. No, Obi Wan. Like at at the very end, Obi Wan takes off his legs and he's like, "Ha! Huh? How do you like it?" Anakin just looks at, up at him. What the fuck, man? I would have laughed, <laughs> no, because in my head I felt horrible. Like he, like he, he turns the process because it's like you know Star Wars Jedi stuff. He just turns his legs into like a propeller and he just like copters his way out of there while flipping off Anakin. Oh God. Um. No, but seriously, you know, not trying to joke about, you know, stuff like that. It's just, uh, and uh, you know, p- putting all jokes aside, you know, just uh, in no way I'm going to say Star Wars needs to be more real because where do you think yeah. you are? But um, but just the idea of just, man, that's going to cause some severe injuries, maybe even death, but we all know, oh, but it can't because yeah. he has I to think they just live, wanted again, to go is, for a yeah. more dramatic Effect, like they needed a way to that. take Obi Wan out, of, uh, Obi Wan out of the fight, but not kill him. So just the Which, fact that the he way, got flung across the room and hit the wall, that would have been no, enough. You know, really. actually, you know, it was because the way he hit the thing, it looked like his spine had already been severed before the fucking thing even came down on his leg. Yeah, but anyway, but, you and know, what's interesting? Dooku uh, being Dooku. I wanna, <laughs> yes, overkill. I mean, the whole Sith thing, right? Oh, yeah. You never, the whole Sith you never thing, stop yeah. in one. But Definitely anyway, not. so the strange thing is, here's the thing, right? Um, oh, by the way, that's funny. I'm just looking at the way um, Anakin's arm is, and it's just, oh, hey, Edward, how you doing? How how you doing, <laughs> Full Metal Alchemist? How's it going? Yeah. Um, yeah. But anyway, no, but uh, getting back to the whole uh, Obi-Wan thing, another instance in this movie where they try to find a way to get Obi-Wan as far away from Anakin as they can for some reason. And I don't necessarily understand why. You know what I okay. mean? Like, no, no, no. Well, not, no sorry, not that I don't understand why. I think that's the wrong. Just the idea of, like, it happened again, right? All three yeah. movies, they tried to find ways of getting, you know, Obi-Wan extremely far away from anything that's going on. Yeah. You know? So like we you, have episode by one, that you mean and just, sending just, him off? Just him, yes, yeah, sending him off grievous. and then... Yeah. Yes, and then finally showing up to just be like, you know, the whole dramatic, which I think the scene worked out well, but still it was kind of just like, man, you were gone for pretty much the entire movie, you know? And then it's just, you're yeah. the chosen one! All right, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm outie. Well, I mean, again, there's a lot of... Away. Yeah. There's lots of going on. There always is. There's a lot of way. interaction with the two of them that you never actually see either. But at the which same is, time... The problem. If Obi-Wan had been around, either their conflict would have broken out much sooner than at the climax of the movie, or Anakin, you know, would have had someone to hold him back to, like, snap him out of it and be like, hey, hey, bro, yo, wait, wait, don't behead him. You know, we, you yeah. know, really probably shouldn't no, do it's, that. It's, yeah, it's true, which, again, like that. I think, which I think is one of the problems, because, like, you have to set it up that way, because, again... We know where the movies go. We know where the series is going. So in a way, you have to set it up. I think that's one of my problems with, like, you, you have to. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't, like, you have all these characters in this universe, but, like, you have to make it this way. Because if you didn't, then, you know, everything would look a bit, oh, wow, right. funny thing. From behind, with his hair, uh, Hayden Christensen does look a bit like Luke. Or like Mark Hamill as Luke. I just noticed right. that. From behind. I was like, oh, also, because he has his black robe on right now, like because you know yeah. it's down in the background for me. I'm like, oh hi, that's funny. I'm sure that's what they yeah. were going for. It never really hit me until this moment, though. But um, uh, also, of course, as we noticed earlier in the movie, we had Padme with the buns, and I was like, ha. Yeah. I see what you did uh, there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so um, I had to double so, take yeah. like the first time I saw that. <laughs> I was like, wait, is that? Oh God. Yeah. It is. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, yeah, there's nothing else that could be. (laughs) But, um, but, uh, but yeah, so like I was saying, you know, I do think that, I think, like you said, it's the climax. Because we're here, 
it might be it might have made it better to us, right? Mm. Uh, you know, just because like we're here, we're doing it. Also, to be fair, you know, seeing Anakin's inner struggle, uh, not only what to do because he doesn't actually want to hurt anyone other than Dooku, no. but he wants to save Padme. And right. I get that kind of love, you know, wanting to do anything to keep a person safe. Now, I'm not saying I'd go over to the dark side, but getting that kind of, you know, wanting that um, to save a person that you really, really care about, it's hard. Now, of course, it turns into that weird Oedipus Rex kind of situation where even though he technically, I would argue his forced choke didn't hurt Padme enough to kill her during pregnancy, it's the stress of him not being around and her knowing that he's a evil murderer. now. Yeah, yeah, definitely hurt. So it's that weird Oedipus Rex kind of situation where it's just, oh no, this prophecy. It's like it, you know, it kind of turns out to be true. But yeah. like you well, were trying so hard to fight it, but yeah, that's the whole thing. Like that's when I really break it down and look at it. Anakin's fall mm-hmm. is really simple and very. I mean. As much as we say, you know, his actions are a bit extreme, even if he was trying to save the one he loved, but it's very human. I mean, yes. you you have to think during, during, you know, one, he's been in a war for the last few years, so he's already high-strung with that. Um, he's losing faith in the order that's taken him in since he was a small child. He doesn't have, he doesn't feel like he has anybody else to turn to. The only... Yeah. He still feels a sense, you know, of connection to Obi Wan, but it is also shaken here and there because of the Council's decisions to make him spy on the Chancellor, and which, the Chancellor is the so only one who's given him yeah. the praise that he's admittedly been looking for. Yeah, and not not, and then the final nail in the coffin: the Force visions he gets of his wife dying in childbirth, and also you could tag onto that. He doesn't even know if his child will survive that or whether the child will die too. So now he's yeah. lost both things that he loves yes. so much. And on the, the top only of the two fact things... that he's already lost his mother yeah. in maybe not the same you know, not the same way obviously, but again, it's the vision of losing someone. He's like, No, I can't have this happen to me again. I think I think that would have been horrible. Just like literally just having the same vision but just sand people, my old nemesis. Oh god. Yeah. <laughs> just, you've come back for revenge. And it's just that idea of, you know, he can't even sleep at night. You even see him have nightmares and wake up and just walk out. It's like anyone can relate to that. It's that fear and pent-up anxiety that you don't yeah. have anyone the, else to really talk you know, to about, and it just eats away at you until it drives you the, nuts sometimes. Yes, no, it makes sense. It's the war thing, I think, that's a bit of a problem in the sense that, you know, it would be nice if there were some background and context. I mean, I know, again, you've read a lot of stuff, you've watched a lot of animated series, so you can get that background. But as a standalone movie, it is a bit of an issue in, you know, these three movies. Yeah. That we'll see some stuff with Anakin, but we won't get that full context. And because of that, it's to, to I think many people, he just seems a little bit. And this was more so, I think, when he had the hood on, like the edgy teenager. Like, it's like, oh, don't hurt yourself on the edge, man. Right. Oh, yeah, no, I, I cannot... <clears throat> I can definitely understand that because the movie really doesn't give you all that much context. Yeah. And now you can get I mean, some of that from yeah. what you know, from what you've been saying. You can get some of it because the movie was showing that to you. But generally, the whole like potential, like oh, high strong, but not. I don't use the word PTSD um, because it's you know it's a, that's a serious thing. But it, it could be a little bit of yeah, just high strung. Like I am, I am in a war. Right, yeah. like this is, and now I'm in quote unquote peacetime, but it's not really peaceful because my wife can die at any moment. Right, so right. that that is there, but you know, I mean, the idea of like my wife can die at any moment, but the idea of relating it to the war, we haven't really seen the war, right? So to yeah. us, it just seems like you know we waited two years to get another fucking movie that we didn't want to see, but people went to fucking see. Right, right. So many people were just like, I don't want to see this next one. Well, you did, and you know you did. You paid that yeah. theater money, didn't you? I feel like right. two could have definitely given you a little bit more of that, like seeing the actual war going on instead of focusing in so much on Padme and Anakin, really. Yes, definitely. But um, something I want to mention, um, I would like to talk about, let's see. Um, uh, oh, yeah. So even though everyone was dying minus Yoda, right, I have to mention 
Yoda climbed on a Wookiee's back as if he were a tree. They needed something to break the tension, and they found it. <laughs> because that was the only thing, and I was like, oh, my God, that's so cute. All of your friends are dead. They needed that there. Like, yeah. the, the child psychologist that we talk about, as if she's been with the fucking series, that child psychologist, she was just like, yeah, have them climb on the back so that the kids aren't essentially crying themselves to sleep that night. All right, cool, cool. Yeah. I mean, he just beheaded two guys, so, you know, throw something in cutesy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, interestingly enough, um, like I said, even though I'm pretty sure a decent amount of us didn't want the third movie after the second one, knowing that it was the last one, more people went to see it compared to the the second movie. Now, it didn't mm. match, if I remember, it didn't match the box office numbers for the first film, which I'll check right now, but I'm 90, 100% huh. sure. But, you know, I'll yeah. check it right now, but I'm pretty I'm pretty sure it didn't. But when you look at episode two, right, the box office numbers, well, the budget was $115 million, We said this last time. Right. Box office was $649.4 million. Uh, episode three, the budget was $113 million, so they saved $2 million. Good job. And the box office was actually $848.8 million. So they did make right. more, I think, because people thought, oh, shit, it's the end. He's going to become Vader. Now, again, yeah. for, for reference, if you forgot, which is totally cool if you did, the budget for the first one, The Phantom Menace, was $115 million, and the box office was $1.027 billion. Right. So they went in the billion territory. So they're like, wow, a new Star Wars. Everyone yeah. saw it. Ah, new Star Wars. <laughs> the second one, you know what? I came and I was pleasantly disappointed. And then people looked at the third one. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> people looked at the third one, and they were just like, you know what? He's going to become Vader anyway. Fuck it. Here's my money. <laughs> Seriously. Oh. Yeah. But, um, but anyway, so yeah, I understand. Uh, you know, talking earlier, we talked about the action, you know, overtaking the um, the writing. I understand some people saying, you know, it's just a complete action fest, you know, sitting there with your popcorn, that's pretty much it, you know, whatever. And I get it. But I just think that compared to the last two movies, w- that formula wasn't as bad as we... That was not the worst yeah. formula. Um, yeah, that wasn't the worst thing to go for. No, not at all. What I do think I mean, was frustrating, though, I'll say this much. Well, none of yeah. the... Well, n- while the council was not expecting to be blindsided and bum-rushed the way that they were... It is a little frustrating, I think, that they were all conveniently in other areas and, you know, the idea that it's just we don't really travel with backup. I know it's in theory their backup are what turned against them. But yeah. just the idea of – it's strange how out of everyone – I mean, you know you know that Yoda can sense things. You know, Yoda is a bit of a higher power in terms of the council. You know, he's been doing this for a very yeah. long time. He is the but, leader. Yeah, for a reason. But it is strange that everyone, I mean, I would argue Mace Windu, I guess, you know, would have maybe been able to do something more had he not died so early on in the film. Because they really yeah. built him, I think, is very powerful, at least in the movie series. Oh, um, yeah. If, if anyone, yeah. If anyone Mace is the number two guy. Yes, it's <clears> in the council. council. He's always traveling so. with, yeah, he's always traveling with Yoda. Um, but still, <clears> it is, it, it is a bit frustrating that everyone else seems kind of, I, I guess, I don't know if I want to say the word second fiddle, but I think you understand the point, the idea that everyone else is just, you know, it's like, there's a council, right? So it's Yoda, it's Mace Windu, and then those other people that are just going to get shot in the back, and it's just, I had no way to defend myself. Oh. Well, Mind okay. you, it was a great scene. It was a great scene. Yeah. But I mean, in terms of, you know, when you sit back and you're like, man, it would have been nice a little bit, a little bit of a fight. I mean, they knew that there were problems. I mean, then again, I believe a few of them were killed by um, Palpatine. To be fair, so they they were low on numbers, but it's still like a strange situation where it's just you know we have a war, we're low on numbers. Let's spread ourselves even more thin. What's the worst that can happen? Yeah. Well, I mean, worst? even even in Episode Two, the Jedi Council or the Jedi Order took a big hit from the battle in Geonosis. They lost true. a lot of knights in that, that is, battle. That is true. Um, and they're spread out even thinner across the galaxy trying to fight this war that's encompassed 
almost the entire galaxy or known space in their universe. Um, the Jedi were, they even make a point of this. This they specifically say in the movies. They're not warriors. I mean, in the sense of they're not there to fight the Republic's wars. They're there to keep the mm-hmm. peace. They're more of they're more of the guys that you send when a planet and the Republic government say have a discrepancy and you need a diplomat that's neutral and that right. mostly everyone respects. That's what the Jedi are for. They're mm-hmm. not really supposed to be on the front lines with these clone troopers. The Republic didn't have a standing army as far as I know. Um, mm-hmm. Until the creation so this of war, the clone army, either exactly. So this, this war, war is completely, completely out of their territory. In a way. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So they're Fair kind enough. of riding by the seat of their pants throughout the entire thing. Like, <laughs> shit, we uh, <laughs> we are not <laughs> equipped for this, guys. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Um, Fair enough. Um, again, background, but I mean, it is a good way to justify. Yeah. The one thing I would say, as as the order goes out, Order 66, um, I mm. feel like as you look at each Jedi, each one that you see becomes less and less prepared for the sneak attack that comes on them. Yeah. Because the first one you see is Obi-Wan, and he's riding off to go attack another platform, and he gets shot with the cannon, and he survives. But remember, everybody, he needs to survive because movies. Like, Yoda made sense, but Obi-Wan was just, yeah, need to survive because movies. And also because I mean, we need to make sure, we need to make sure well, that he's gone, he's away from Anakin until later. Yeah, that's true. I mean, but, uh, there was a deep well at the bottom that he fell into, but yeah, that's pretty convenient, I would say. You could say, you know, I know that's yeah, what yeah. the argument's going to be. That's too convenient. I'm like... Which, well, which I know some yeah. would say. Some would say every movie is too convenient. You know, every main yeah. character just lives through things they shouldn't. But still, I mean, again, it's the idea but, that it, it's what well, yeah, they give you the death that, you know, of everyone else. Well, not that. Clutter, you know, not not you know? even just that. Not even not even just that. Just the idea that you know, like you look at a you look at a movie and you're like, oh wow, the main character is quote unquote OP, right? The main character survives. Look like at Doctor Who, right? Oh, the Doctor survives everything. Well, you know. The idea that, mind you, yes, he can die and regenerate, but but we're going, we're, okay, well, Doctor Who, it's weird to call it linear because everyone who watches it goes, like, but it's not, it's the ball of, yeah. I know. But the point is, is that. Timey wimey, I know. A, yeah, right, we get it. But the point <laughs> is, is that it's usually a story that is, see, we're seeing the Doctor's life going forward, right? right. Usually, but we're not yeah. saying, let's do a prequel series of Doctor Who. And then every time it's like, will the Doctor die? I, I mean, well, it's funny. Doctor Who's one of those shows where you're like, he actually could, but usually, yeah. Doctor Who right. is a bad example. Um, but yeah, like a, like a, a <laughs> hey, superhero movie, ball. right? I know, yeah. I did, right? Superhero movies, though, usually it's just like if you're gonna do a prequel, Wolverine prequel, you will not have you. You won't sit there and be like, will Wolverine die? He's gonna be actually no, you would in superhero movies. That's yeah, not helping. <clears throat> nothing I do helps. Uh Nothing I do fucking it's more, helps, so you don't fuck it. It's the idea you know what I mean. Everyone knows. A series, yeah. it, a series doesn't go backwards when you already see the character's Usually. death later on yeah. and say, are they going to die? It's like, well, no, we've seen them die. Of course they're not going to die here. This is not where it happens. Yeah. We know where it or, happens. Or, yeah, or to be fair, you know, if it's done once, I think it's fine, but it's really hard to do it for three movies, right? To do it right. for three movies. And especially putting this, you know, which I think in a way is why they've tried to keep him. That might be the reason why they've tried to keep him away from the action because there's no feeling of, will he die here? But the problem is, is that's almost for everyone. Like pretty yeah. much every character in this, you know, in, in the series, uh, main character, people that were going, yeah, you know, Yoda, whatever, you know, you know that they're either going to die here because they have to, like Padme, we're like, yeah, she has to die here. We know right. that. Right. The twist is how she will die, so that was you know interesting. But again, we know she has to die. Um, right. The but you look at everyone else, you're just like, oh no, will Palpatine die here? I'm ninety five percent sure he won't. <laughs> yeah. Actually, nope, not even a margin of error. I'm one hundred and seventy percent sure he will not die here. He will not die. <laughs> no. Yeah. Uh, one no, thing I want to mention, no, by the way. No, you will die. <laughs> uh, one thing I want to. Yeah, I want to mention, um, so Yoda, 
the fact that the fact that that was Chewbacca. Yeah. Right. Are now, you having I a repeat know. of Episode One, seeing three PO and R two, and two? I don't know if it's the idea of oh, you know, George Lucas has to make this universe so much smaller by make making the one Wookiee we see be <laughs> Chewbacca, or yeah. Yoda might be like old racist grandpa. Like, is every Wookiee Chewbacca to him? Do they just oh. all look alike? Oh my god. Like, it's just, well, thank you, Chewbacca. Ooh, my name is Tom. Go fuck yourself. Ooh. In a way... You know? uh, um, no, I mean, also, way, look, we've seen the... We saw the Christmas special. They don't all look alike. Uh, I mean, even even no. looking at them now, right? They have minute differences. I just don't, I don't think they want to... I don't know what you're talking to. about, Matt. What? I don't no, know what I mean, you're talking um, about. Oh, oh, the Christmas... I thought you were just like, Wookie, no, they all yes, look alike. Wookiees, I was like, Wookiees I was are like, different, but I don't know what this, 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 I don't even know what Christ, that is. Christ Moss? I can't is that what you were trying to yeah. say? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's it. Hollow thing. Die? Hollow Day? Yeah, Hall don't, e day? don't what know is, what. No, but anyway, but seriously, looking at these Wookiees here, I think the biggest problem here is there are minute differences, but I think the biggest issue is they didn't want to CGI them completely different. So what it looks like is, at least for certain shots, they're just copy-pasted doing almost the same exact thing. Right. Well, which you know, kind of like is, what is, they did with the Gungans in Episode One. Granted, they don't. Well, I mean, okay, they probably do look similar to a lot of people watching the movie, but I, I mean, I could see a few differences here and there. But like, mm-hmm. again, it's like they can only make so many differences until they're going overboard with it. Like, okay, we can't spend that much time on this. But I mean, there it are sucks certain... though because they can, but they'd rather not yeah. because that does cost a decent amount of money. And also, yeah. which takes a lot of time, but in a way they can, though. I mean, it's crazy. Yeah. You know, when you look at animation and you look at the kind of detail that, you know, that certain companies will go through when right, it yeah. looks like they shouldn't have the time, right, or the money, but they do right. it. Now, nothing – I'm not yeah. trying to – I'm not going to sit here and be like, and that's why episode three sucks because Wookiees. Like, no. All right. But, I mean, you know, little things like that, I think. Yeah. would have been nice. Just yeah. something you so, notice. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. No, I agree. Yeah. Also, to be fair, my main point, which is my real point in all of this, is fucking making the universe so small that the one Wookiee that we see that's involved with Yoda that we really get some kind of connection with, it's just like, oh, Chewbacca. It's like, right. really? You fucking serious? Yeah. You fucking serious? No, I understand. Because, like, look, because yeah. sequels... I haven't seen, you know, I, I, I feel bad saying I haven't seen episode seven, but, you know, we're, taking, we're recording this in advance. So I haven't seen episode seven yet, but what I'll say is, you know, uh, any character that appears in that movie, right, if you haven't seen any fucking trailer, uh, any character that appears in that movie, it makes sense because it's just, oh, look, it's the next one. You want to, you know, show some people, like, you know, get, get right. some, you know, cameos. From the original and trilogy. To be fair, yeah. And to be fair, I mean, it's still like kind of a rebellion Right, so if characters haven't died yet, yeah, I mean they're going to be fighting the rebellion. I understand that still, you know, they're still having that idea of like, oh no, but it's still making it smaller. But I, I'm cool with it because it's a sequel. Yeah, but when well, it comes, they're to still prequel, going to be prominent figures. Mm-hmm. You know? That too, yeah, because they're still because they've only mm-hmm. gotten experience fighting longer in the rebellion. You know, unless you went right. to live in a cave somewhere, you sh- you know you're going to be part of the rebellion. So right. it makes sense. But yeah. in terms of this, you know, it would be it would be like okay, uh, now this is one that I can make. You know, this is a good reference. We have Dragon Ball. We have Dragon Ball Z. Now, Dragon Ball was actually made first. So anyone th- anyone who might not know, like, oh, Dragon Ball is the prequel. No, Dragon Ball is the original. Z right. was the actual sequel. And of course, we never talk about GT and Super. Hey, we podcast on Super. Um, anyway, so um, point in all this is imagine making a Dragon Ball. You know, like a Dragon Ball uh, prequel, right? right? And it's just literally, it's just, oh, I'm traveling <clears throat> around the world. What? Who are you? My name is Gohan. Wow, that's so crazy. And who's that? Oh, that's Muten Roshi. What? Roshi, yeah. yes. And Octane is literally right over there waving. Oh, man. Now, I will admit, they did train with each other a little bit, so it does make a little bit of sense. But literally, just, oh, who's that? Oh, that's the... You know, that's the, um, was it the crane? Was it the, the crane hermit? Was the other crane hermit? Yeah. So like the crane. Yeah. Whoa, fits of the crane. What? Oh, dial pie pie. What? Is that a young Dr. Gerald? Like, it would literally be like, fucking stop it. <laughs> fucking yeah. stop it. 
right? That's kind of how it feels sometimes in this movie or in these in this you know newer because you can't call it the newest trilogy the because prequel, seven is out. But yeah, the prequel. Right. Thank you. Yeah, the newer <laughs> trilogies. You know, the newer trilogy rather of episodes one, two, and three. It yeah. becomes a bit of an issue. Um, so, I mean, by the way, I want to, sorry to interrupt you. I have to say this. So, you know, movies on in the yeah. background, as I mentioned, they do a weird cut where it comes into a circle when Anakin is talking to Padme and it's muted in my background, but the, but like the background was a, um, just deep space, right? The space CGI. So I literally thought the movie was like, fuck this, this, this movie turned to shit. I'm starting myself from the beginning. <laughs> and I was like, is the opening crawl coming back on? Oh God! I was like, "Have you become self-aware? <laughs> this is the only good parts of the movie. We're going back. These are the only good parts." <laughs> the, pre- the prequels become self-aware, and it's like I have to stop myself before it gets out of hand. <laughs> Basically, um, they are the nicest, like sentient robot yeah. beings in the world. Just I understand. I am a nuisance. I must destroy myself before it is too late. Oh. They're the Android 16s of the world. <laughs> anyway, so, but uh, what were you going to say? Sorry to interrupt. Uh, oh, about Chewbacca. Um, I mean, the only thing that kind of makes it, re- I mean, I guess in a sense redeeming maybe for me, mm-hmm. it's like, huh, Chewie was a badass in the Clone Wars too. <laughs> yes. You know, oh, yes. kind of thing like no, that. I- yeah, it would be interesting if we saw him in the army. I think it's just the idea yeah. of like him being so close to Yoda, being the one yeah. that we really notice out of a giant crowd. But if there's a giant crowd, and we have one focused on a bit more, and that ends up being Chewbacca, okay. Right? Because that's right. Chewbacca as a younger Wookiee. He did look a little bit slimmer. Yeah. To be completely honest. So, like, he's a younger Wookiee. Okay, makes sense. Although, but, um, I, just, I just thought of something. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't wouldn't it be hysterical if um, because in Empire Strikes Back when Han and Leia are captured on Bespin and Vader is taking them away, mm. Chewie's there too, and Luke says to Yoda, "My friends are in danger. I have to help them." I wonder if like he had said to Yoda, you know, Han, Chewie, and Leia, and Yoda looks up like Chewbacca. <laughs> He's like, uh. Yeah, do do you know him? Oh my god, I do. Go and save them, you must! (laughs) No, like, Chewbacca? Like, shit, oh fucking. (laughs) (laughs) Like, no, like, Yoda just hops in the X Wing and he's like, you know, come on, let's go! That's my buddy! (laughs) Literally, just like. Just, you know, just, are you sure you can drive this thing, Master Yoda? Motherfucker, no hands. <laughs> just forces it. <laughs> Fucking forces the entire thing. <laughs> oh, man. Um, but, yeah, no, it, uh, and mind you, that's, literally, that is the fucking, like, I, again, I oh. hate the idea that just, you know, he's flipping everything around still. Uh, not as bad as clone, you know, Attack of the Clones, but it's still, you no. know, flipping everything around. Uh, yeah. One thing I want to say, though, is just that, you know, when you include curse words, for some odd reason, it becomes a lot more palpatinable. I'm sorry, I'll see myself out. You should. I not even the prequel. That joke would not. that that joke would make you feel like grievousing. The death of that humor. I couldn't think of someone who could pun with humor. You do cool me a disservice. <laughs> Oh, oh, the prequels did um, not deserve that. I don't care how bad people think they are; they did not deserve that just now. I have a question. So when um when when Obi Wan walked away from the fight and he thought Anakin was dead, what do you think? Um, what do you think R two D two said to him? Because I sat there and I thought, you know, R two D two just beeping, and I'm like, is he sitting there going, man, just saw that fight? Anakin was on fire. No, I think. Well, I. <laughs> I think R2 <laughs> would have been like, wait, what? But I don't think R2 saw and it, Like, R2 didn't even want to be there. When he lands with Anakin and he tells R2 to stay with the ship, R2's like, we should not be here right now. I do not like this place. All right, or so, no, better I'm yet. I'm sorry. Obi-Wan's face, 
Okay, go on. He goes, I got a bad feeling about this. Yeah. <laughs> Just to beat some um, whistle. So I'm sorry, but Obi Wan's uh, face during General Grievous's fucking glow stick party. Right. When he's when he has like his arms and he's just flipping around like all of the lightsabers, the different colors, it looks like he's like, Listen, listen, I know we must have a fight right now, but I wanna rave. <sighs> you know, Seriously, it's actually that was really the coolest rave. It it's really funny. When I saw that movie the first time with my dad in theaters, mm-hmm. we both he bo- we both kind of looked at each other, and I was like, you know, I was geared up for this, and he was getting excited for the fight too. But he leans over to me, and he's like, he's like, I don't know if Obi Wan can do this, and I like look up at my dad. I'm like, this is like, you know, oh, was this 2007? So it would have been like middle school or something. I look up at my dad, and I'm yeah. like, are, are you shitting me? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you would have like, been not actually in the no. If it was no, it wasn't. The movie came out two thousand five, so you would have been thirteen. You've been eight year, uh, eighth grade. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And it was like, like you know, obviously I didn't say anything. And it wasn't even from a place of dad. He doesn't die here. It was more. I didn't. I didn't think like that as a kid. It was more of a fact of. Dad, Obi Wan's gonna kick his ass. Obi Wan's amazing. <laughs> what I think is funny <laughs> is that they dismissed it so quickly. I think. Where it's just like, oh man, he has so many arms. Just does it. Uh oh. Good for you. Well, because like that was the thing. As soon as he cut one of those hands off, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> like he's so well, dead. That happened. Yeah. You know. And even well, that's the thing. Like, Grievous is supposed. I mean, I can understand why people find him a very disappointing movie villain. And to be honest, yes, another villain with you know, underdeveloped potential here. Yes, I agree. Mm -hmm. And he's even supposed to be this great warrior, and there's a story behind him of how he was a great warrior as a human, but um, he was, there was, there was an accident planned for him, and that's how he got that, you know, mechanical body. Mm. So, they still wanted to preserve, like, his power as a warrior, but they wanted to be able to control him. So they screwed him over to do it. That <laughs> sounds familiar, huh? Yeah, right. Um, um, oh, by the but, way, so we talked about... Uh, oh, sorry. Please continue. Yeah. Well, um, fuck, train of thought. Um, yes, in Gendi Tartakovsky's Clone Wars miniseries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so, Yeah, was before the, the actual... Yeah, before the I the believe cartoon, it was the long running be, between one and two, or just after two. Not not mm-hmm. the long running one. It only ran. Yeah, no, for no, not the long seasons. running one. No, 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 yeah. no. Yeah, yeah, it was actually really short. Yes. Um, but Grievous, the, I still remember the episode where they introduced Grievous, and he was a complete mystery. You know, no one, all all these battle reports kept coming back of you know this assassin that was killing Jedi and taking their lightsabers. And um Kiety Monday, actually, the guy with the very um tall tall head, I guess would be the, the appropriate, the ponytail and the long white beard. Um, he goes in with like four other Jedi, four other knights, and he's the master. And mm. they get wrecked. Grievous just takes them out one at a time. And He's doing all sorts of freaking movements. Like, you thought the, you know, glowing, you know, rave stick twirling was, you know, an interesting move. He was doing flips and upside down shit, and I was like, oh my god, no wonder people are being killed by this thing. So, yeah, I guess it kind of does drive home the point they really didn't, like, use all of him. But at the same time, all the Sith boil down to being cowards. Even Sidious is a coward. Everyone who is a villain, they will run away if they don't know that they can absolutely win the fight. And unless they can overpower their opponent with their confidence and their ability, Mm -hmm. even if, unless they are 100% sure that they are going to win a fight, they will run away. And I I don't know, I kind of think that's a point that people forget. As, As disappointing as that can be, like, I agree, it kind of is seeing them run away all the time. But at the same time, it's like, that's their mentality, you know? Yeah. 
It happens. I just thought but it was interesting matter. to point out. But no, 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 no. It is good. No, I understand. I mean, listen. These are why I have. This is why I have you on the show. I have you on the show because you need to tell everyone about your love of mm-hmm. this of this franchise in every way, shape, or form. And you know, of course, having good reasons to continue uh, doing these podcasts because I mean, think about it, right? Before you know, if we don't do episode seven immediately, which doesn't look like we are, um, it'll probably you know we're probably doing it around the DVD Blu-ray release. So yeah. what matters? But we will do is, it. Oh, we'll do it. Oh, oh, yeah. But what matters <laughs> is is the fact that you know there are a lot of animated series that we can jump into, both good and bad, that we can yeah. take a peek uh, into for the future. Yes, right. and bad. Uh, yeah. So yeah. Uh, and, um, I know, me too. I haven't even started yet. And what have we haven't started? We'll talk to you about it next week for Star Wars Wednesday. But anyway, um, yeah. So the point is, is that um, you know, it would it would be great. It, you know, well, it is great because we are doing stuff after this. But it would not be great if you were you know, sit there and just go, oh no, I mean, we can't, right? You know, I right. I, I only watch the movies and I don't want to watch anything else. But oh, uh, okay, you have a nice day, right? <laughs> so no, I mean, yeah. So uh, anyway. We were talking about Wookiee, you know, the Wookiees uh, before, and of course, one Wookiee ended up being Chewbacca, and the idea of just like, you know, a, a somewhat of a joke of just, is Grandpa Yoda just going around just, are you Chewbacca? Like, is everyone Chewbacca? Um, but, on a, on a more serious note, speaking of potential racism, we didn't get a lot of Jar Jar Binks in this movie, which I think also helped. I, it's funny, I think I actually lied last time, or I, I wasn't oh. sure. Okay. Uh, Jar Jar does make an appearance in this movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You forgot, but I mean, it wasn't an appearance yeah. that was as uh, profound, if you want to use the word profound no. sarcastically. No, he was at Padme's um, funeral In possession. the first two. Yes. So it was very, yeah. Which, you know, nothing wrong with, it's funny. No. In epi- you know, it's, it's not as if I hate, because I think in, in episode two, he was a bit more um, mature and a bit less yeah. like a like a caricature or a stereotype, if you will, if that is you know, the, I mean, I don't think it was on purpose, but I think it was, you know, again, yeah. I think we talked about this. He was trying to be more of a country bumpkin, but yeah. he came off as if they were trying to go for this, um, this whole blackface African-American type of, uh, of character. And again, they, we don't, you know, Mark sit here and say that they were definitely going after it because in no way am I trying to sit there and say, yes, George Lucas is a racist. Cause no, I'm not going to do that at all. But, um, but it's just the, I guess I don't know the man. And frankly, we haven't heard, at least as far as I know, we haven't heard anything about that at all. It's just the idea that, you know, we haven't had a lot of African-American characters in, as I said in episode one, uh, episode one podcast, we haven't had a lot of African-American characters. So by not having them and then having, you know, this character of Jar Jar Binks, you know, and, and Mace Windu thankfully becoming a lot, you know, of, not that he wasn't a good character in episode one, but they definitely expanded on him uh, mm-hmm. a lot more over the last two movies. And that was good. You know, because we needed that and a bit less of Jar Jar Binks. Unless, of course, you were going to reveal that he was Sith Lord, in which case, totally. <laughs> but they didn't, so less Jar Jar Binks, please, thank you. Um, okay, so so we get up to the fight with, you know, Anakin and Obi-Wan as we're sort of semi-wrapping these up, but not exactly. Um, you know, because we always say wrapping these up and then it takes another 20 minutes. Um, well, yeah, Anakin choked out Padme. Like, the anger is, is it's getting you know, full control of him. The person he's trying to save is literally the person he just choked out who is pregnant yeah. with his child. Now, priorities, but my God, it's happening. Uh, well, also, yes. I think at you this first. point, it's... At this point, it's basically the lust for more power and the fact of slaughtering so many to get that power has basically just warped his mind. Like... Yes, Anakin has done atrocities that he would never have thought himself capable of doing, and I think, in a way, that's very intoxicating. In a sense of like, not to say that you should ever murder anyone, but it's like if you actually did it, it's like holy shit, you did, you know, you did this. Yeah. Yes. You know, and it's like, and you're like, you have the potential to do this. It's like, so what's stopping you from doing it again? And then the slippery slope to evil and destruction and death continues on forward. And there's no way of, there's no real way of stopping it at that point. You know? Yeah. I understand. Yeah, that, um, that got heavy. <laughs> yeah, it did. No, 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 no. It, 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 that's it what this, you know, this is, this is the tragedy. This is the climax. This is where everything gets very heavy. 
It did. No, it has. It really has been. But, um, okay, so what, and speaking of, you know, things getting heavy and, you know, needing that uh, heaviness, Hayden Christensen, uh, he, got, he got a little bit better at the whole acting thing. I mean, I think there was a bit more to be desired, but still better than the last movie. Now, again, yeah. I don't know if that's because they gave him less to work with, but still, I don't know. Personally, I feel like they, uh, I feel <clears> like he did a good job, you know, yeah. again, well, a better job than the last film. Uh, oh, yeah, which, is, which still means something. Yes. Um, I, also, I by the way, like Anakin's character exponentially better in three than I did, you know, yeah. in two. And even then, even then, he still had that whole like the edge, you know. It's just like, oh, yeah. I'm so edgy it's with his robe. Still there, but still, it came off. No, no, no. He didn't technically have that in the second one. It wasn't edge. It was just wah, 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 wine, more so, wine. you know, wine. Yeah. This one was more just like, shadow the right. hedgehog, right? <laughs> um, right. Do you, have you seen that Photoshop of Shadow the Hedgehog where they kind of remove the edge <clears throat> and they crop it in a way that it says Ow the Edge? Oh, my God. <laughs> have you seen? Because the Shadow the Hedgehog, the box, or the PS2 game, yeah, it's Shadow the Hedgehog. Yeah. So they they, right. they Photoshopped it and they took out the H and the way they cut it, it's just Ow the Edge. Oh, wow. No, it's beautiful. I haven't I love seen it. It's, it's, it's a piece of work. Um, it's nice. an art form. Anyway, so... I also say, do you remember the fight, obviously, the fight between yeah. Obi-Wan and Anakin? Um, you notice that random robot that appeared, literally that just was like flying around? Yeah. Literally, wrong floor. My bad, guys, <laughs> yeah. my bad. Because seriously, just, he gets up, it looks at him, and it's just like, um, I am, you have a nice day, gentlemen. I think it was more of like thinking of programming-wise, like the robot comes up, it's like, you know, I sense organics. Wait, why are you out here? You're not supposed to be out here. And then just like, oh, what the fuck do I know? I'm just programmed to, you know, move lava around, you know, you know, do whatever you want and just left. I look at it more like I look at it more like, you know, it's just you are not supposed to be up here. I will eradicate pew 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 pew. <laughs> you both best be on your way. You have a nice day. Just yeah. goes away. Just literally just as they're fighting, been... just yeah, it would have yeah. been pretty funny if Anakin just, like, reached over and sliced it in half. <laughs> sliced it in half and just soccer kicked it over to Obi-Wan? Obi-Wan, yeah. That would have been interesting, but, actually. Um, so, anyway. Uh, the, 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 uh, the, oh, I always have one of those one, per episode. The You Were the one Chosen thing, One scene still gets me. Oh, what? The ch- oh, his, oh, the last one? Yeah. yeah before you, before you get into that. You one! Okay. I did want to ask you, um, did you feel like Obi-Wan and Anakin had better chemistry in this movie? Yes. Yes, definitely. I mean, because, it did. it's funny. They weren't around a lot, but I liked yeah. the chemistry because it felt like there was a, okay, obviously, in a way, you, you could say they didn't have good chemistry because their <clears> characters didn't connect, and that's why there was drama, and there was tension, there was a problem. Yes, but it felt a bit different than in the last one where it felt like it was trying to be more like they were buddy-buddy with Anakin being a bit more like a Bart Simpson-esque, you know, like, you know, like, hey, like basically like Anakin calling, let's say, Obi-Wan a butt munch. Like, that's the kind of character that he was portraying in episode two. No, seriously. Right. Uh, I know it's stupid, but it's, it's <clears throat> yeah, I find it to be a legitimate, uh, like, he would literally yeah. call him a butt munch. And you're like, yeah, that's the fucking character. Like, stop but, um, looking at me as a child kind of thing, you know? Yeah, yeah. So this immature, but it feels like it didn't necessarily resonate with the Obi-Wan character, where also the fact that we discussed this, that, you know, Obi-Wan still looked really young at the time, where yeah. now, it you know, for some reason, Obi-Wan does look a lot older. I guess maybe yeah. as a human being, you know, he just got, you know, the, the actor just got older. And Hayden Christensen yeah. looks old as well, but he doesn't look, like, I don't know, he looks like in his early 20s, but again, last yeah. one... He also looked like he was in his early 20s, right. but he really wasn't. He's supposed to be in his late teens, I believe, right? Is that what we... Yeah, he's supposed to be 19 in episode two. Yeah, he looked like he was a character on Glee, which meant, which means that he's played by an actor who's in their late 20s. And I believe <laughs> so, in episode yeah. three, Anakin is supposed to be... I believe it's yeah. five years? I believe the Clone okay, so Wars 24. are five years. So yeah, he I should be 24. 23, 24. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Which makes sense, you know. I can see that. Even though in this scene um, during the the Mace Windu death, he does look a bit older, but I can see that the age being twenty four, and then of yeah. course Obi Wan being you know a bit down the line, more so early thirties. Yeah. 
Right. You know, um, I, I get it. The one, yeah. Though it's the one weird, thing though, I, I wanted to say. say Obi Wan has yeah. to be a lot older because yeah, you look at oh yeah, like how long yeah no because like he looks only because okay uh, when you, when you see Obi Wan after three Luke and four. Yeah. Oh, that would have to be... I mean, I'm not exactly sure how old Luke is in A New Hope, but I think he's at least, at the very least, he's 17. Mm -hmm. I would say he's probably... Like, in my my opinion, I'd say he's probably 20. Or in his 20s. So... Luke? Yeah. Is it because... No, it's, it's funny. To me, he seems like he's 15, 16. Not that he is, is, but like... He came off the vibe was like, oh, I'm mm. just to go to school, you know, but I can't go to yeah. school. Like, even if it's college, I guess you're 17, right. 18, but not 20. Yeah. All right. So, so yeah, right. 17, 18. I, I, would, yeah. I, would, I would agree but with that. But even then, let's possible. say 18 years, right? 18 years. Yeah. If he was, I mean, like, I guess, to be fair, if, um, you know, if Obi-Wan was 30 on the dot, which I'm assuming he's not, but if he's 30 on the dot, he would be yeah. 48. In 18 yeah. years. So it would, right. but, I, but even then, though, like, I will admit, he has lived in a desert, does not do well for someone. To be yeah. fair, right? That, but he yeah. does not look, he looks like he's in his 70s. And I mean, the events in 3 probably aged him a bit, you know, not in the sense of, like, you know, natural lifespan, but just, you know, the taxing yes, of yes, yes, yes. everything oh, being yeah. lost to him. He would probably mm-hmm. age a little bit more than normal, you know? That kind of yes. thing does oh, by affect the way, you. Question. So um, we see, we see um, Palpatine use his power, and that ages him? Like, does he use his life force in the power? Because he goes That's... from looking a decent yes. age, right, to going, like, he went, from, he went from old man, which is zero, to Power Rangers, like, villain, which is ten. Yeah, to Davros. <laughs> oh, wow, yes, Davros is a good one. Davros yeah. is a very good one. Thank you. I was thinking more Power Rangers villain because he really looks like, you know, five people in spandex are going to be like, hey, Palpatine, I am the yeah. evil emperor, Palpatine. Yeah. Well, we're going to fight well, you. Yeah. yeah, it's, I mean, the idea behind it is basically it's supposed to be his inner evil being revealed on the outside. Okay, fair enough. You know, that kind That's of cool. angle. That's cool. No, because um, it looked like... I'm it, not... It, yeah. I'm not exactly like sure... Evil. Like oh, yeah, yeah. I'm not exactly sure what the mm-hmm. reasoning behind that is, whether, mm-hmm. uh, like, whether it was using his life force. I really don't think it that's should have saying. been using his life force, if that's but what it, it feels was, that way, I don't right? think it was. Okay, yeah, no, it feels I that think way. it like was more of, using right, his using uh, Kikaho. Yes, which right. is, for, for people in America, it's try being canon. Okay. And for people, uh, and for people in 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 Spain, it's El Tribune Cannon. Okay. I don't speak those um, but uh, <laughs> I'm Spanish. I um, should, but um, well, I'm Hispanic. But the point is, I should speak languages. Uh, I that are somewhat relevant like, to my culture. I feel like um, my reasoning for it is more of Palpatine um, trying too hard. In, mm-hmm. in not so many words, like, you mm-hmm. know, I'm shooting lightning at Windu. I'm going to kill him eventually. You know, <laughs> it's like, this is lightning. I'm throwing, I'm literally throwing lightning at him. He's going to slip up at some point and get hit by this and die. And I think he just does it for just too long, and then he realizes, fuck, this isn't working, and he's redirecting it at me, and this hurts. Because <laughs> mm. I really so, think he was lost in the anger of it for a few seconds, and then yes, he realizes, oh, "Oh shit, yeah. this is killing me." I mean, that's the point of it, you know, being lost, being Sith, you know, being um, right. part of the dark side, being lost in your anger. You know, something and really funny. Somehow, it even might be a some... part of the pain. Like he might have mm-hmm. even been using the pain of getting the the attack redirected at him to, you know, throw more strength behind it to mm-hmm. maybe overpower yes. Windu. Which, yeah. some, which does work in a weird way. Uh, the funniest thing, I think, is that we have Palpatine, you know, um, when he becomes, like, when his evil side is shown, it's just kind of like, man, you got to cover that up. Ah, uh, <laughs> yes, of course. Puts the hood on. You somehow become worse. Yeah. <laughs> you look worse with the hood on. Fuck. Yeah. 
You creepy well, that, bastard. Take it that's off. Why that scene, that's why that scene is so beautiful. And Padme's line, I, I love Padme's line when she looks up at Bail Organa and she just goes, so this is how Liberty dies. With thunder supply. Oh yes, well that was well, that that was a later scene. I'm referring to the scene of Mace Windu's death. Well, yeah, and it's just yeah. the idea of you see his face, and it's like, can you really just cover that thing up? And he does, yeah. and it does not help at all. It's like, oh god, the eyes, the eyes just make it yeah, so no, much worse. Just, basically, yeah. It's um, like at least when you have the hood off, I'm distracted by your scarred, deformed face. But when you put the hood on, all I see is your glowing yellow and red eyes. You're telling me nobody else is going to notice that. <laughs> Oh, man. But uh, so one thing I want to mention, you know, jumping back into the um, the scene where, you know, Anakin is severely injured, maimed yeah, uh, by lava. I want to mention, yes. is it weird that ri- the writers of this movie lifted the Frieza revival plot from the Android saga? Because I sat <laughs> there and we've, we've compared Vader to Frieza to Hitler. We've compared Frieza to Hitler on certain, you know, and I know for some people I understand, you know, we apologize if it comes off as a little... Um, insensitive because Hitler was a real person. But, you know, just the idea of, like, these characters are literally committing mass genocide with no problem whatsoever, right. and those are the parallels. So the yeah. idea, though, is that, you know, we, um, we're we comparing this to Frieza, though, in the sense, at least I am, because, you know, it never really hit until it's like, wait a minute, yeah, not only is this guy, you know, mass genocide guy, he also had to be revived, you know, via robotics right. by a father figure. <clears throat> and, of course, we all know um, Dragon Ball Z came out first. So I'm sitting back going, why did they lift the plot from the Freeza, like the Freeza Revival plot? Why is that a thing? Like just, oh no, he was destroyed by robotics, but we will rebuild him. Now I know that sounds a bit like the $6 million man, but, um, right. but still the six, the $6 million Frieza. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so it was just, it was strange. I think I'll say the word strange. I was, you know, just sitting back. And just hearing like, oh, you know, just kind of watching it and just thinking, you know, sitting back and thinking like, ah, yeah, so he's freezing. I mean, like he's just it's pretty funny. Much if anything, I always thought of like when they remade Vader, like Palpatine mm-hmm. was kind of worried, like, oh shit, you know, is my apprentice now not going to be as powerful as I wanted him to be because he needs, you know, a respirator basically. But I mean, in a, in a I, I feel odd saying it this way, but in a weird way, Vader rocked it because he just... he His fashion sense is just... I think he is actually one of the most fashionable stores <laughs> of the year, Tom. You know, watching meant, him walk down the catwalk. Okay. I, I mean, look at him more, work that cape. Yes. No, to yes, be fair, I have to be honest. No, no, no. I have to be honest with you. I'm going to be completely... Like, I'm, being honest, when I, wh- I was going to make a joke about Palpatine's fashion sense when he put on the hood. Like, got to be honest, creepy as fuck, but you really pull it off well. It works for you, pal. <laughs> you know, it really does work for you. You know, you're able to really just uh, use that hood to just compliment <clears throat> your fucking deformities. But I mean, Jesus with Christ, Vader... what's wrong with your face? <laughs> <laughs> with Vader, um, I really, like it just made him even more formidable because oh yeah i mean he's at least w- with with the new legs he's at least 7 like at least 6 foot i i would say probably 7 so he towers over anybody else in the room and if you're dueling this guy you know lightsaber to lightsaber he has the advantage on you no matter what and the fact that he can repel you with one arm and that's all it takes, is also very formidable. Yes, he gets, he gets you know, stuck with no legs and, prosthet- you know, prosthetic limbs, and he needs a breathing apparatus and a life support system, but unless you really beat the crap out of him, he's, you know, no pushover. Vader is no pushover. Yeah. Not at all. Um, what's interesting is, you know, we... Um, we have Vader looking very formidable because of this. Uh, and, you know, it's, it, he looks formidable, but I mean, his, it's hard to just be the no part, not formidable. <laughs> no. Also, I want to mention, oh. Something. oh God, no, no, this is playing <laughs> in the background. No, sorry. I'm not watching order 66 again. No, <laughs> sorry. It's on it. the background. 
and it's just yeah. random New Zealand kid. Hey, you know, what are we either New Zealand oh. or Australian? Hard to pick up the difference for me, but then again, I'm not. Yeah. I'm from neither. I'm a New Yorker. Sorry about that. All right, forget about it. Uh, but um, et cetera, et cetera, okay. other New York tropes. Um, but yeah, so the no thing is completely terrible. Like, no, you have to work on your acting. So you saw the way I did it. The way I just did it, it was that was good. That was good. Good for me. I mean, good for no, but um, uh, no. But here's I the, feel the, like the, that would have been more of the voice well. effect than anything else. Yeah, yeah, probably. Uh, the one thing that I do want to mention, though, and this is completely, completely, um, like not even a joke, just being dead serious. Uh, the idea that for all these years Vader would believe the lie that he killed Padme. I mean, because I understand anger controlling you, but it's just like I don't know. It feels weird that it's just for all these years he would just believe that instead of just. Well, let me get some. Let me possibly maybe get some other uh, another viewpoint on this. Let's see what actually happened. I mean, you know, right? But Can I get so an replay that, on that? Yeah, no. Isn't it really strange that in the Star Wars universe, even though Episodes One, Two, and Three do have more technology than Four, Five, and Six, which do make sense because you know this is pre-Empire. But you know, with the Empire, I mean, they want them living in essentially the, you know the Dark Ages, <clears throat> uh, you know, Stone Age, um, but the um, the interesting thing is the fact that, you know, there's no cameras. And I think it just made the story work because if there were cameras, it would have just been completely... So in a weird way, I guess it is good that they had no cameras. They have certain equipment that allows them to project, but they don't have cameras well, because it really would have... I wouldn't say that on Mustafar there was no way of getting a... Co- like like you say, like cameras. I would say I there mean, would have been... Have... Palpatine yeah. would have destroyed that. Fair Any incriminating enough. evidence he would have gotten rid of. True, true. I just think that it and, was um, it, it's strange. And, I think that um, yeah. also, by the way, Yoda's in a Saiyan space pod. But anyway, um, <laughs> literally, what a live action space pod would look like for Saiyans. Yoda's <laughs> a Saiyan. Uh, anyway, no, but uh, but seriously, I I don't know. Take I, a I wish on the like, Dragon Balls. I must. Yeah. Right. It's just. Um, God, no, I can't think of what he would wish for. We have to move on. Um, Destroy Palpatine, I'm like, please. Is... Yeah, right? Just <laughs> uh... far beyond my power. Bullshit, yeah, right. that well, is. Hello, hello, Lord Palpatine. How are you doing? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Fucking traitor you are. Uh, anyway, so, um, yeah, I... Um... <laughs> Uh, I, no, 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 because oh. it's just like, no, how horrible oh. would it be if someone, how horrible would it be if oh. Anakin would have fucking been a piece of shit, like, using the Dragon Balls, this is episode two, Anakin, fucking Anakin would have said something, like, you know, just like, uh, oh, like, you know, how about you just go put your fucking thumb in your ass, you idiot? Your wish has been granted. Wait, no, I didn't, what? No, don't go away. <laughs> this is like the one wish rule. No! Yeah. Good job, Anakin. We could have stopped the Clone War. <laughs> but now a dragon, but now a dragon's gonna have his thumb in his ass for a year. Good job. So Anakin. Now are you are you making parallels between Anakin and Yamcha? Hey guys, why don't we wish for a whole lot of money? Oh, you you guys don't think I was serious, right? I, I was totally kidding. Are you saying that Yoda should have jumped on Anakin and blew himself up, <laughs> and that would have killed Anakin? Is that what you're saying? That Yoda's a Cyberman? Is that what you're saying? Oh. Uh. You're a monster. You're a monster, not. Tristan Walter. <laughs> You're a monster, Tristan Walter. That's exactly what you said. And I have video um, evidence of you saying that. I have video evidence of you saying that, because you're the one who just said it. No, I was hoping that I'd get you to say, but I never said that Yoda was a Cyberman. <laughs> Click. I said that Yoda was a Cyberman. <laughs> <laughs> I just edit. Uh... But How many anyways, times have you tried to blackmail me on the air? I think it worked once, either with you or with <laughs> Satish. I think it worked once where one of you said that, and it was like, ha, ha, I did it. You were like, fuck. Yeah. Anyway, so, uh, but anyway, all, you know, but seriously, um, you know, Vader believes the lie. It's weird. Or, you know, Anakin, whatever you want to call him now, because he's technically Vader now. Yeah. He's been Vader for half the fucking movie on and off. Um, It's weird. Yeah. You know? Also, while, okay, while there is tension by having Padme pregnant, 
and giving birth to the ch- you know to the children immediately um because you know in theory he's been gone for a while so although to be fair i don't know when she became pregnant if he was gone for 5 years but anyway right. um well but, i think the idea that that she was uh oh no no you're right that still wouldn't make sense cuz the children wouldn't have been fully formed like that's the, what I'm saying. I think the reason so, they I try mean, to arguably, give in the movie is like, oh, she's dying, yeah. but we can save the kids. Let's, you know. But it's still like, but it's still like a make super it duper. happen. I mean, pre- preemie exists, but like it's a super duper preemie situation. Unless yeah, you're saying this yeah. happened over the course of like a month, which even then, again, oh. if she just got pregnant, although that, it's weird because like it looked like he just came back, but the war was five years. So unless like right. you know, he showed up. Like three, you know, like he was, seven months ago. But yeah, they made it seem he was, as if he's been gone for five years. So it's funny yeah, how his first was, reaction wasn't like, um, whose children are these? <laughs> I think it was more of a sense of, hey, I'm going away for a long time. Wink, wink. And then comes back. Oh, right, that we did that. No, but again, five years was the, the Clone Wars. I was about to go Yoda. Five years was the Clone Wars. But, uh, well, but he wouldn't Wars have been like five years he wouldn't have been, let's say, on tour for all five years. Like, there were times where he would come back. I love you so much because, like, I know what? I know what you're going for, and I don't mean to make fun of you because I love that you said that because I get the ability to picture them going on tour for the Clone Wars. Like, that's your clones! All right, what do you want? To kill the rebel scum. All right, we're going to kill you in the first. Put on Fucking goddamn it, man. I'm so sorry. You said I'm I hate you I'm so, so much sorry. right now. I love you so much, and I'm so sorry because I know that if you said stuff about me, I'd feel really sad, and I admit that, so I'm so sorry. But it's just, mm. you said the words on tour, and it just makes me think like, you know, you're such an ass. We are <laughs> the Jedi. Yeah, you're we are the asshole. fucking Jedi. Uh, <laughs> uh. You're going to have sex with some of those groupies? Oh, all these clones look the same. Anyway, um... Ah! <laughs> they all look like Django Fett. <laughs> I mean, like, it was my fetish at one point, but having all of them oh. be Django Fett, it just... Oh, God. It's just like, how many Django Fett orgies are you going to have? Um, oh. Anyway, so, uh... Yeah, that, that's hey, a whole okay, other they're beat. rock stars. Okay, they're rock stars, okay? I'm sure there's fan fiction about that somewhere. <laughs> oh, Yes. And if not, there will be by the time this podcast is out. Uh, oh, people will listen to that. You know what's... Wow. I can just write three episodes on, on clone fan fiction. Um, but anyway, uh, I don't know where the fuck we are right now. The point is is that... Um, is that oh, yeah, there's more tension with, ha- with making babies. Uh, but the issue, yeah. of course, is that, you know, by having the babies be made immediately, it just, like, you know, it it puts this huge time constraint on everything, and it really... Now I know. Yes, we watched episode I, four without any, <clears throat> without any, you know, uh, without any idea. I don't know why that was the fucking best word I can come up with. Thank you, Matt. Right. Uh, you know the idea of what could have happened previous, but it, it, right. it gives off this idea of like it felt like it was like such a long time. Not of course you wouldn't think like fifty years, obviously, because you know if he's in his twenties. Yeah. Uh, if Vader is in his you know twenties, of course, but still this idea of just like you know how long has it been. How long has this evil empire been ruling the entire galaxy? Not like 18 years. Ah, ah. Well, Well, I mean, when you're oppressed for that long, you know, by your government, that's probably a long no. time to you. No, yes. It, just, it seems like the way everything was not developed and kind of wiped out to, again, the Stone Age and everything. <clears throat> I mean, again, that can happen in a day in, in this galaxy, to be fair. But it felt as if it was just like, oh, man, you know, this has been going on for, again, I don't want to use the word centuries because obviously it just wouldn't make sense. Um, right. But it just felt like it was a bit longer than 18 years, you know? Okay. Um, or, again, if you were like, well, Luke is 22, 20, still 20 years, 22 years. It, you know, it, I, I think, like, the idea of, like, Vader eventually having a son um, felt like it. And again, it was hard because you just have to wrap up some things in this movie. Because I think it would have been strange if Padme had lived, you know? Yeah. Like, how would that have yeah. worked? So, but, you know, and of course, if you if she lived, it's just like, then she would have had to have kid, had kids earlier. And that would have been, of course, even more of a clusterfuck. Right. But 
still, it's um, it was a strange situation. That's why I think maybe even some people, you know, in this movie, seeing the way it turned out, would have said, no, you know, I think I would have rather have had, you know, episode one, older Anakin, episode two, even older Anakin, episode three, have them have kids, or not even older Anakin, just episode one, have them be Vader. You know, I think a decent amount of people were were looking, and again, you know, we can't sit there and just rewrite a whole trilogy, even though I'm sure a lot of people would love to and have already. <clears throat> yeah. But, um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's, you know, again, it's hard. Right, it is hard because this is what you know was what we're dealt with. But be, yes, be, you know, because of what we the, uh, what we were given in episodes one and two, it does quote unquote make sense to have her have the kids in episode three. But again, it makes such a large universe feel so much smaller in the sense that episodes one, two, and three, uh, I'm sorry, one, two, three, four, five, and six have really taken less than a hundred years to form. I mean, I guess. No, in no way am I saying that this makes that this cheapens it at all. Because again, we still have four, five, and six in our hearts, and we still have one, two, and three to kind of go. Ah, they're the uncle we don't really talk to. Like they're that side <laughs> of the family, and yeah. um, you know. And then of course we have seven to divide everyone completely, right? Right. Just, just seven is just the new kid. You know, it's just like the, the younger member of the family. Where half the family is like, oh, they're. They're doing so poorly and everything. And so I was like, no, honestly, they're trying their hardest. And you know what? They're doing very well in school. That's what episode seven is. But, um, but yeah, so I, in no way am I saying this completely destroys the universe in any way. I just think that, you know, again, having everything, it's the whole, like, making the universe smaller. In a way, it's literally time-wise been made smaller. Right. You know, in the um. sense that we've taken something that could have, you know, taken a while to form and really had it just kind of wrap itself up in the last, what, I would say maybe 50 years? Right. It's not even, let's say, less than 100. It might even be up to 50 at most because we start with episode yeah. one and he's a young kid, right? So let's say he's, what was it, 10 or something? He was nine. Was Anakin 10? He was nine. He's nine. 24 yeah. by the time he becomes Vader and his kids are born. That's 15 right. years right there. Add another 18 for Luke, because let's go on the high, or you want to go on the high side and say 20. That's, you know, that's, um, that is 35 right there. And then we look at, um, you know, we look at the, the other two, you know, five and six, and let's say we yeah. add, like, what was it, like two, three years? Not in between, just overall, I think? Um, no. I would say there's definitely a few years in between those movies. Both. At least so one or two. Years. Oh, oh, so it's in four years overall. Let's pretend. Well, right? I mean, between so, four and five, and then between five and six. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. So, like, two years in, for one, then two years for another. Although, so that combines five into and four six, overall. maybe not so much, because Han was captured and put in carbonite. So that might have been only a few months, but yeah. Yeah. So let's say like three years, just to be just to be right. Good. So you you kind of okay. have this go on for about um, what was it thirty? Did I did I come to thirty eight years? Thirty yeah, forty 30 years. years. Yeah. So the, the, on the high side, it's forty years. So it's even less than fifty, arguably. Now again, right. yes, a regime can occur and a regime can happen. I mean, you know, it, if anything had gone wrong in history, and ter- and I it sucks to say gone wrong because in, it, we're Americans, so it's just like oh, because Americans win, and that means everything's great. Like no, we've, you know, it's not just because we've won is everything, but still, if certain things had changed, yes, you know, a regime can you know can appear in fifty years, you know, to be yeah. fair, right? But I think it's also because it's a fictional mm-hmm. world with galactic stuff. Yeah, that we like realism, but sometimes it's just kind of like ah. You know, it would be right. nice if it was a little bit, you know. But uh, anyway, so I we're feel at the like end of our... What? I feel like it's... Well, just... I mean, two more things. I, I just feel like sure, it's... please. Because there was such a gap between the original mm-hmm. trilogy and the new trilogy that it feels yeah. like in the in the movies itself it got wrapped up so nicely and so quickly when you waited for mm-hmm. it for so long. Mm-hmm. I feel like that kind of adds to that. And then just, like... I know. I think you were trying to hint on it before, but I wanted to just hit it myself as well. Um, Obi Wan's just last speech to Anakin when he basically ends the fight, 
Oh, and I know we had talked about this, um, I think, outside, well, outside of the show, or maybe even last time, but the mm-hmm. whole um, I have the high ground line. Yes. How you thought, and you and a lot of people thought it was ridiculous. Like, I basically looked at it as Obi-Wan's last attempt at trying to end the duel without yeah. having to physically hurt Anakin. Because Obi-Wan right. still doesn't yeah. want to. It's you like, know, I he, yes, he's done terrible he, things, but it's like, this, interestingly is, enough, this is my brother. Yeah, you know, I do think he could have brought him in. He, yeah, he could have brought him in to try and help him and rehabilitate him. I think yeah, he could have had right. Anakin not been Anakin. Right? Yeah. Um, well, one thing I want to mention, the thing, like, at as, that point. <laughs> yeah, one thing, one complaint, one question. Um, I okay. feel like I'm, I'm the caller. One complaint, one question, I would just like to... Um, <laughs> no, but... Uh, the, the the you know the complaint as always as as many of our complaints are uh the the idea of just you will watch over the boy yes until he randomly finds you and then it's just like oh wait are you oh like you could argue he's putting on an act but yeah it came off as very much like oh you are the boy of oh you know I I remember you like I hope you do you were tasked to watch the fucker um, well. Yeah, I think it was more of Obi Wan trying to cover his ass in a way and not having yes. Luke suspect anything. Not yeah, that he yeah, would, yeah. but just in case. No, no, no. I get that. No, no, no. I get that. It's just like again, it's a problem because we, um, even though we do this sometimes in our wrestling shows as well, we have to kind of twist it in a way where yeah. at least the wrestling show, arguably like Monday Night Raw, will have a week, or even on SmackDown, which is three days later or technically the second day, because it's uh, filmed on Tuesday, to redeem a storyline. Like, if we go, oh, that's a plot hole, they ha- or that's right. a weird situation, they have another day or a week to go, ah, but here's the addition. And it's like, damn, because right. you're long running and you're live, damn you. Um, yeah. But with, you know, but with these movies, it's just, that's it. That's what you get. Yeah. So it's weird, yeah. because, again, it's just like, guys, you should have had, like, that Bible, that manual of just, oh, this happened in episode four. Could we really oh, write yeah. it this way? Yeah. Hmm, maybe not. Um. <clears throat> You know, unless, I mean, I guess it was the method was kind of like, oh, do it from the shadows. But literally just, you know, the idea of like, I will never let him know. You know, he will never know. So if he finds you, ah, okay, this is what we can, but it was kind of more like, just watch him in general. Really, watch that kid. And it kind of felt like he fucking wasn't. Uh, Two, what what was the Qui-Gon story about? Like, did that ever come to play anywhere else? Did we ever see any more of that elsewhere? Because I didn't oh, really understand with, exactly what that was about. Maybe I'm the idiot. Actually, I usually am. But Well, it's basically a way to explain, um, or an idea to explain how Obi-Wan and Yoda get the ability to project themselves as Force ghosts. Okay. And right, they actually cool. do do an episode or two about it in uh, the Clone Wars, the animated series. That's the awesome. Longer running. Okay. Yeah. That's nice. So we have to end the show here real quick. Yeah. We'd like to thank you all for listening in for our Star Wars Wednesday uh, episode. Next week we'll have something completely different. Hopefully, Star Wars droids. What? I know. But we have to end this right now. We want to thank you guys for listening in. Our website where you can find all our podcasts are those guys on the radio. That's homeward.com. Our Facebook is slash those guys on the radio. Our Twitter is at those guys radio. And our Instagram is slash those guys on the radio. You can find us on iTunes by searching up those guys. Or you can find us on YouTube by searching up those guys or those guys on the radio, sorry, those guys on the radio on YouTube, or our Let's Play channel, which is Those Guys Play, where Tristan and I have played Star Wars Battlefront and a lot more. Also, our merchandise, which is cafepress.com slash TGOTR merchandise. Thank you all for listening in, and have a good night. Say good night, Tristan. And that as well. Hang up, Tristan.